We're in part four. I'd like to talk about our understanding about the predictions we can make for the carbon isotope ratios of C3, C4, CAM, photosynthetic pathways, and intrinsic water use efficiency. Carbon isotope variations as we, as we now understand from the fundamental works of Graham Farquhar indicate that the carbon isotope ratio that we measure in a plant depends on the source carbon isotope ratio of the atmosphere minus the diffusion coefficient for 13 CO2 relative to 12 CO2 and then the fractionation associated with net carboxylation in associated with Rubisco times CI over CA. Now given that A and B are constants and that over a short time period the carbon isotope ratio of air is a constant, then the carbon isotope ratio on the plant as we now understand it is largely determined by the CICA ratio. That is the ratio of CO2 inside the leaf in the air spaces relative to the outside air. Here you see an experiment in which the CICA ratio is measured inside uh, a photosynthetic chamber and by looking at the CO2 concentration and isotope ratio of CO2 coming in and comparing that to the CO2 concentration and isotope ratio of that CO2 leaving, we can calculate what the isotope ratio is. And as you see, there's a nice tight relationship. That relationship is not a linear regression, but it's actually the value predicted by this equation. So there's a strong agreement in C3 plants between theory and observation. Thank you, Graham Farquhar. Graham and colleagues went on to show that C4 photosynthesis could be equally well predicted. In C4 photosynthesis, we have a second reaction to consider, and that is because the, CO, the carbon source in photosynthesis of C4 plants is not CO2. It is CO2 that has been converted to bicarbonate. So the first consideration is changing the CO2 from a liquid form, uh, from an atmospheric form into a soluble form, and then the conversion of that, that CO2 in water into bicarbonate. Otherwise, the equation is very similar. Carbon isotope ratio of a C4 plant depends on the substrate minus B, and B3 minus A, as for C4 plants, plus the fractionation associated with the conversion of CO2 to bicarbonate. The CO2 fractionation associated with, with Rubisco is modified in C4 plants by this term here, theta. And that term represents the leakiness associated with C4 metabolism. That is that once CO2 is converted to C4 acid, diffuses in, and is then decarboxylated, there's no reason why the CO2 can't diffuse back out. When it does, it gets refixed by pepcarboxylase in this initial cycle. But as that CO2 leaks out, it creates an opportunity for a fractionation event, and that's where this B3 theta term comes into play. Now, CAM photosynthesis is very similar to C4 photosynthesis. Whereas in C4 plants, we have a spatial separation of the pepcarboxylase activity and the Rubisco activity into different cells. In CAM plants, those two reactions, those two carboxylations, take place in the same cell. In CAM plants, pepcarboxylase is active at night and the CO2 is fixed into a C4 acid, which is stored in the vacuole. During the day, the stomates are closed that C4 acid is decarboxylated, and we have the C3 cycle as we had uh, for C4 and for CAM. That results in a very simple expression, and that is that the carbon isotope ratio of, of CAM plants should depend on the isotope ratio of the air minus B and B4 minus A times CI over CA. So of all the variation here that we find and CAM plants should be associated with variations in CICA as that CO2 is initially diffusing in and being fixed into a C4 acid and stored in the vacuole. Now, 
Another term which is commonly used and often misrepresented is the term water use efficiency. <clears throat> this is a term that was first uh, described maybe a century ago, representing the amount of biomass formed relative to the amount of water consumed by a crop. In physiological terms, it became known as the rate of photosynthesis divided by the transpiration rate. Carbon isotope ratios do not directly measure water use efficiency. That's misleading. Instead, carbon isotope ratios measure what's called intrinsic water use efficiency. We can come up with this equation here to describe the flux of photosynthesis associated with the CO2 gradient, conductance of water relative to the um, ratio of diffusion of CO2 to water, and a similar equation for transpiration, water vapor gradient times the conductance. So water use efficiency reduces to this term here. Carbon isotope ratio can't measure that because carbon isotope ratio will give you only an indication of the CI to CA ratio, not of the vapor gradient. Instead, what carbon isotope ratios really give you is the intrinsic water use efficiency, which is the photosynthetic rate relative to conductance, and that is this term here on the right. Intrinsic water use efficiency has received a lot of attention recently. Too often, though, in the publication titles, they simply say water use efficiency instead of intrinsic water use efficiency.